Welcome back. A question I often get. Are you saying it's all just a manipulation of your nervous system and a manipulation of your brain and there is no higher self, there is no divine? Wonderful question. Very valid. Because as we learn more and more about ourselves, we can see lots of different things as purely mechanistic. And is that a proper way to look at ourselves, to look at the world, to look at yoga? Or is there something deeper at play? So let's get into it. We've all been living with science for quite some time and the scientific method. But when it first arrived, there was a real clash. There was a real war going on between a scientific thought and the thought of religion. And religion had reduced everything down to utter, utter simplicity. Everything is made by God. I remember one of my teachers, Don Anjay, was completely the abandoned the idea of religion when he asked a nun he said was that clock made by god and the nun said yes god made the clock and that was utterly too simple for him and so he rejected religion entirely because of the simplistic answer the man made the clock the man thought of the clock the man put the gears inside of the clock where is god in all of that one of the things that happens to somebody who investigates neurolinguistic programming and in the Myers-Briggs system and you start to see that people are just these binary choices walking around that they created in their childhood and so all of the mystery of people starts to evaporate it's just these little binary choices that they make and the pattern spreads out into their entire life and it becomes their personality. And the same thing was happening when science arrived on the scene. You went to your priest or you went to the head of your church and you said, who made the heavens? Well, God made the heavens. Okay, well, who made the sunset? Well, God made the sunset. Well, who made the mountains? Well, God made the mountains. And then science comes along and says, well, actually the tectonic plates pushed up the mountains and the firmament in the heavens is created by gases and the reflection of rays through the gas lights up the heavens, right? Everything is explainable. And at that moment, many people were losing their faith and the church was fighting against science because of that. It was seen as something bad. And now today, most people who follow the scientific route abandon the idea of God. Because if everything is explainable, what need is there for a mystery, right? And so the yogi encounters the same thing. All of these things that I thought were so mysterious are quite explainable. I have projections down in the body forming the chakras. I have deep centers of the brain that are giving me these amazing experiences in deep meditation. But yet we are missing some fundamental questions here. And the fundamental question is, well, who made those things? Who made those laws? Who made those deep centers in your brain? The very foundation of science is that the world is explainable, that the world does follow natural law. Natural law is the foundation of science. So who said that there should ever be laws? If this is just a world of chaos, why are there laws? That's a higher magnitude of question, isn't it? A more fundamental question. Who set up that there will be laws? Who set up that you will have a nervous system? Who set up that you will have a brain and that those pieces of the brain will allow you to commune with the divine? Who set that up? So what I'm suggesting 
isn't that you are manipulating your nervous system and it's only your nervous system, that you're manipulating your brain and it is only your brain. What I am suggesting is that there is a science to your body, that the one who created your body, that set it up in the beginning, the fundamental idea that allowed it all to spring forth, that one set it up that you can retrace your steps back inside. And so Yogananda put it this way. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, it's as if you have an antenna inside of you that allows you to commune, that allows you to radio God and get answers. And I'm saying the same thing, except I am giving you exactly the specific parts of the brain, the left amygdala for bliss, the right hippocampus for expansion. These are the parts of your brain which are set up to commune with the higher self. So you will have to decide for yourself and you might well go through this process where you start to disbelieve. And so I want to give you a quote from one of the fathers of quantum physics, Werner Heisenberg. The first gulp from the glass of natural sciences will make you an atheist. But at the bottom of the glass, God is waiting for you. So that might well be the case for you in your practice of meditation. The first gulp and you let go of what you thought you knew which is a natural process inside of meditative yoga. What we thought we knew, we let go of because it begins to evaporate. It doesn't hold water in the way that we thought that it would. But if we will keep going down to the bottom of the glass, we will find the higher self and we will find the divine. And the mystery and the awe of life will come back to us. The awe of our creation will come back to us. And that's what's waiting for you. That's what I'm offering to you to look for in yourself is look for the awe of life because many of us are blind. We are so blind. We don't see the cute baby. We don't see the cute chihuahua. We don't see the cute kitten. We don't see the sunset and we don't see the sunrise. We go, oh, that's a sunrise. And you're in the left brain. You're not actually seeing it. You're not actually there. But if you pause and you actually take it in and you absorb the sunrise or the sunset or the cute baby, it's, I think, the best testament to the higher self and the divine that instilled inside of you is this feeling of awe and grandeur that is unexplainable. Why is that inside of you? Is it just your nervous system? It doesn't, it doesn't follow close enough. Go look at the sunset and look at the power and the awe and the glory that flows through you as you watch the sunset. That's the testament of a higher self. You are touching it in that moment. You're tasting a bit through the right hippocampus of the brain. That's your antenna and you're reaching up into the divine and you're tasting it. And that awe, which ought not to be there if life is nothing, but an outward shell and a nervous system and a brain. If that's all we are, why that awe? Why that glory? It's there because you have a higher self. It's there because you have the divine inside of you. And don't get hung up on a name. People say, oh, I don't believe in God. And then you ask them enough questions. Do you believe in an oversoul? Oh, yes, of course I do. Okay, so we use a different label. Who cares about the label? Don't get hung up on a label. Maybe somebody stuffed a certain word down your throat. You say, I, I can't use that word. Don't use that word. Use something else because it's the meaning which is important. And that's what we're looking for in all of this, in all of yoga. We are searching for the meaning inside of ourselves. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you 